So check it. I got this question about virtual visits and how that's working out. And I think this is an interesting time to talk about this because today is something like Commitment Friday, right? Uh, there are at least two commitments on tap that OU fans are going to be very, very interested in because you're talking about Mario Williams going to make his decision today. He's a four-star wide receiver in the 247 Sports Composite, a five-star wide receiver in the rivals rankings and a top 40 prospect, right? And his suitors in at, on the finalist list for him are LSU, Georgia, Alabama, Florida, and Oklahoma. We be a tremendous get for Oklahoma. It has a comp to Andy Isabella and both Mayberry and I love us some Andy Isabella. Another guy you want to take a look at is out of Texarkana, Texas. That'd be Clayton Smith, Reggie Cleveland All-Star, six foot four, 220 pounds. My man is an edge rusher, outside linebacker by trade, but he lines up on the numbers to go get buckets when they need a third and long converted. Those are two that you want to pay attention to if you're an Oklahoma fan. If you're an Oklahoma State fan, pay attention to what Colin Oliver is doing today. Also supposed to announce his commitment as well. He's considered to be an Oklahoma State lean, but he's probably going to end up winning my Miles Slusher Award for the best player from the state of Oklahoma not to get an offer from the University of Oklahoma. Big linebacker, six foot two. He earned his four star in the composite earlier this week. So that's going to be a tremendous get for whomever can lock that kiddo up. You also got a couple more, one more in Texas and a running back. I mean, we got five, I think, today total among the top three, well, 400 kids in the, in the country that are going to announce. And I'm really excited about finding out what these guys are deciding to do. But I find it more interesting about how we got here, right? The journey of recruiting, the journey of these kids is the reason that I love it, right? I don't really like talking about it in the meat market sense, though I understand Six foot four, 225 pounds matters. I understand four, three speed matters, right? Going on the camp circuit matters, but there is no camp circuit to go on right now. And that's what's making this so terribly interesting to me because you can't take kids on camp circuits to elevate in the recruiting rankings, which means a guy like CJ Stroud, who signed with Ohio State last year, who goes from 813th in the country to top 40, uh, I think number 41 or 40 overall in the 247 Sports Composite last year, basically from going from the opening regionals in California all the way to the Elite 11 final in Texas, becomes not just a top prospect, but ends up getting an offer from Ohio State out of nowhere and joining that 2020 class. That's not going to happen this year because we're already getting word that the dead period is extended through June 30th, which means that you can't have camps, which means that you can't have regional camps for Rivals 5-Star Challenge for the opening final. All of this is up in smoke which means that there's a two-star, three-star kid out there who's got the goods, who just doesn't get to go beat up on other kids to earn that offer. That said, the virtual visit is becoming a big deal. The two-hour phone call is becoming a big deal. And one of the reasons that I think the virtual visit is working so well for places like Oklahoma is Lincoln Riley was already all in on it. One of the first things that he did when he took over as head coach at the University of Oklahoma was really push out the digital content, right? Hiring Zach Hefley to head that up for football and being very, very active on the Twitters, right? And when you got word that you could retweet the kids, right, and you could DM the kids, he was in on that. Even using Twitter to great effect to secure a four-star commitment on the day of early signing period in 2019 on the defensive side of the ball without a defensive coordinator. He's adept, right? And what else can you give these kids? If you're paying attention, you can give them a lot. So Brendan Walker. One of the great kiddos out of the Oklahoma area to sign with the University of Oklahoma last year out of Bishop McGinnis. His Twitter avatar is a logo, right? Where did he get the logo? There you go, right? And being able to show the branding and being able to show things that you can stick on your iPhone as a screensaver, things that you can send to your friends, that you can post to your social, that can grow your brand, as it were, that is associated with the University of Oklahoma is a big deal. And I think that's going to be able to help, especially in this age where can't compensate them for at least a year. And even then, it ain't going to be the universities that's compensating them. It's going to be whoever wants to advertise as a part of this kid's journey through college football. But even that, the NCAA is trying to get Congress to regulate, which I find fascinating and interesting because we're talking about perhaps a $10 billion business across all of college athletics, including football, basketball, and what have you. 
as to how much money is out there to be made from the, for the kids and by the kids. For instance, Trevor Lawrence being able to really flex his notoriety into helping coronavirus victims has been a tremendous boom, but what would it look like if all that money was going into his pocket? What would it look like if Shane Bouchel did not walk his check that he raised on his GoFundMe up to the Dallas mayor and said, hey, this is for the folks who are most affected by this pandemic. What if that money went into his pocket, right? What if he had a way of branding that? What if he had a YouTube channel he could use to profit from that? What if he had an Instagram channel he could use to profit from that? Or what if he could get 50 grand for a Twitter post because he's got half a million followers on Twitter and because we have so many more avenues to be seen, right? You also have so many more avenues for which you can show this kid how this can work for you and how it can work for them. The virtual visit, being able to Zoom conference and be able to look inside of not just the kid's room where you might be doing this thing in the living room. And these are things that always would happen, right? But also it goes from being a 15 minute visit for like in home to perhaps a two hour Zoom call. And then you can have all of your assistants on the Zoom call with the kids and their parents. And you can be on the phone with the kids for an extended amount of time. And that's also where Nick Saban has been the best. When he's able to get on the phone with a kid, he usually is able to do that thing that we see the virtual visits done, which is create some sort of relationship and some sort of understanding about what this can be for them, what this can be for us, why going to Tuscaloosa of all places might be in your best interest, why going to Norman of all places might be in your best interest. And I think we're going to see aspects of the virtual visit carry over, particularly graphic design, right? This is a very interesting period for graphic design because kind of like, I don't know, podcast, everybody thinks they can do it. And then people go out there and try to do it and they figure out how much they suck, right? And you have to actually commit yourself to learning to do this and learning to do it well. And it's real easy to suss out the people who suck at this and the people who have made this their vocation. Right? I use vocation, not career. Way of life. It is how you're deciding to get through this all, right? Same thing with podcasts. It's real easy to figure out who put in the time and the effort to not just get good on the mic, but get good at the presentation and the distribution and who didn't, right? And I think that's one of the other ways in which a place like the University of Oklahoma can really, really get ahead and keep some of this stuff further ahead.